What is going on guys? It's Kevin here. I'm here to talk about places that I shop online uh, with so many different marketplaces, retailers opening up, closing down. Shout out to opening ceremony, RIP big boys. It's a bit overwhelming to try and find the best places as well as the places that one has a great selection or two will save you a decent amount of money. Uh, so I kind of compiled up a list of both marketplaces as well as retailers. So I'm going to split that in two parts. Check in the comments for the timestamp if you're only interested in one or the other. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, the first section that I'm going to be having is going to be actual retailers. First up is Essence. I think Essence has one of the best UI and user experiences among all of the different um, kind of like our online retailers. Not something that's like overtly like crazy, flamboyant, like they're not gonna like, they're not gonna tie a ribbon around like your items. They just get your items to you very quickly, very efficiently, um, as well as without costing an arm and a leg. There are no ads on the platform, or at least not to my knowledge. Uh, very clean, everything is black and white, very to the point gives a price or if it's on sale, gives like the OG price versus the new price. Um, very, very clean layout, separates it male, female, or men like women's, uh, as well as they just have a very clean approach to both the images of the products as well as how they style the products. One of the key things that I think is extremely valuable with Essence is the fact that they have measurements of almost every item at almost every size, um, or at least the sizes or items available to their platform. I think that is extremely crucial. As some items fit super oversized, some items fit small, cropped, boxy. There's so many different styles and I think Essence does an amazing job. Like that's one of the things that, um, that I think really contributes to user experience is because of the fact that it takes into consideration what the users want without doing anything more, but just meeting those expectations and just kind of fulfilling all of that. I do like the articles that they have. Uh, the articles are very nice, very cleanly written. Uh, the layout is great. So I really enjoy the fact that they try to incorporate a little bit of like personality and like brand identity into those articles because they write articles, whether it be trend reports or certain brand highlights. One of the only, I guess, um, downsides in my opinion is because of the fact that um, it's hard to find new brands or it's it's hard to discover new brands on Essence unless you're just going through the designer list um, just on the left hand side. Yes, if you follow maybe their socials, they'll post about it. Maybe they'll mention it in um, in like one of their articles, but because of the layout of it, it streamlines, if you know what you want, it streamlines where to find it um, and like where to go. But if you're, if you're kind of like looking around, then the only time that I have found new designers is either on the sale or um, either on just scrolling through and like looking through their left hand designer list. Uh, but outside of that, I haven't really found any new designers in that avenue. Essence also has one of the best sales known to man. Um, they continuously drop prices on some items and the brands that they go on sale for, they are brands like Isamaki Omplice, um, Raph Simmons. Um, I remember when they had like Calvin Klein, Raph Simmons, that went on to like a variety of brands go on sale and it's one of the best prices throughout all the internet. So number two would be Seam. Seam is a small um, online retailer. Well, I guess they used to be small. They're growing a lot bigger now, but they're an online retailer that is approaching retail uh, through the mobile landscape. They don't necessarily have um, a traditional website, but their app is extremely intuitive and very well designed. So Seam is still going through beta tests, so some features that they want to implement aren't fully implemented yet, but their list of retailers or list of brands that they're carrying is growing quite exponentially. Um, I remember they only had a handful of brands, but when they first acquired like APC, that was a big deal. And now they have like Bottega Veneta. Um, they have um, quite a variety like Billy LA, 
as well as like Bristol Studio. So those are quite um, varied in the type of categories that they're in, whether it be streetwear, luxury, or somewhat in the middle. Uh, I think Seam has a very powerful platform, in my opinion. Everything is very like seamless. Um, sure, there are some things that they are gonna implement, such as like the purchase feed, or they're gonna implement more social aspects, kind of like the purchase feed with the friends feed and a variety of things. I also like that they have sort of like a, a membership card um, that I think that is a good way to keep customers coming back to Seam, coming back to the same retailer. And also their two minute takes are sort of shortened articles that you can ideally read in two minutes. Some of them are a little bit longer. Um, you might enjoy a little bit longer form content, but in the audio stuff that they have, that's very quick. I like to listen to it when I'm on my way to work, on my break, etc. So it's just a quick way to consume um, media effectively. North Store is one of my picks mainly because the clean UI as well as you can get a lot of items there cheaper than retail well, at least US retail, because of the fact that it excludes VAT tax. So a lot of the times, that's how I got uh, actually most of my APC jam pieces for under retail is because of the fact that everything was like extremely cheap overseas, cheap overseas, um, mainly because retail is cheaper overseas as well as they didn't need to pay any VAT tax, etc. cetera. Um, another thing that I like about Norris is because of the fact that they have a very um, very specific brand list, which could also be a con. Um, it's not quite as varied as Essence or Seam, but I think if you like the type of aesthetic that Norse uh, Store has, I think everything is gonna fall in line, whether it be like Acne Studios, um, I believe they have a Hender Scheme account, um, and they have a few others like that as well, and everything kind of fits into that niche, and I really, like the way that they lay that out. Um, a downside would also be because they're such a small retailer, uh, they won't have enough like sort resources or funding to really do kind of articles and that extra type of material uh, to really give it like a brand identity. Yeah, so I believe their sale is also going on as the time of the recording of this video. Um, pretty good stuff on sale. I think it's somewhere, I think most items are 50% off. All right, so for the next section, I'm gonna be talking about marketplaces. And number one, everybody saw this coming, it's Grailed. Uh, Grailed, although there are a few things that could be cons, I still think it's one of the best fashion online marketplaces around. Mainly because of the fact that it's such a collection. And the reason why I put it number one is because one, it's easy to use. Some of their new UI stuff is a little bit wonky, but it is relatively easy to use. They have quite a large brand list. Almost any clothing brand that exists could pr probably been on Grilled or is on Grilled, um, as well as it's just kind of like where everybody likes high-end clothing throughout any type of niche, whether it be something under the hype market, the grail market, the Satorio market, everything is sort of like pulled together into Grilled. So whether it be you started off with hype items, but you're transitioning into grail, but you're also looking into suiting. So it kind of helps with that transition towards that. There are some features that I personally um, want to criticize. Number one being recently they added digital authentication, which I think that's, that's not a feature really needed. That like literally probably just means somebody looked at it and they said, ah, that looks, yeah, like that looks legit, but there's no guarantee that the product that you're gonna get is actually legitimate because of the fact that you can literally upload any like any legitimate photo and then send a fake. You can also just, I don't know, I think that feature is a little bit useless in my opinion. Um, but I do like the features that they added such as like seeing, being able to see quick icons like uh, whether or not somebody's a speedy shipper, um, somebody replies quickly, or somebody um, is like a trusted seller. Like there's like all those little like icons that they recently generated. I think that's a great idea. Grail really does do a good job with like 
um, kind of cultivating a brand image as well as producing original content as well as kind of keeping the community involved with the drops or with kind of like the most expensive items sold on Grail. Like I think that's a great way to get the community involved in like banter and just like shit talking people who spend like $10,000 on like a Chrome Arts plunger. Second, I'd like to talk about Poshmart. Uh, Poshmart, although it's geared more towards like just normal clothing as well as weird accessories and weird one-off things, kind of like the, space, the Facebook market page or Facebook marketplace, I should say. Um, I think Poshmark, you just really have to sift through the items. Um, most of the time it is going to be junk, but in that like slim percent chance, I've actually found decent items as well as items that weren't available either on Grailed or StockX or anything like that on actually uh, Poshmark. And usually they're lower priced because the people selling them don't really have a full idea of what they're selling. You just kind of have to sift through the trash. But you'll also find weird items that are like, dude, this is like clearly from the clearance bin. And people will try and charge 200 bucks just because it has a jump man on it. And last but not least, it is eBay. I found a decent amount of sneakers and clothing from eBay. Although it is, um, or although it does suffer from the same issues as Poshmark, where most of it is gonna be junk, and the people that are trying to sell there um, might upcharge something that's useless and maybe you'll find something cheap. Uh, I think eBay is a great way, especially for sneakers, for you to explore, uh, find new um, sneakers, like whether it be a lot of people getting into dunks recently, as well as kind of um, being able to find sneakers at a, at a higher discount, I should say. Um, mainly because why I'm mentioning sneakers so much is because eBay actually got rid of their eBay fee uh, for sneakers that cost over $200. So you can find that for an amazing, amazing, amazing deal. So yeah, that's pretty much where I purchase all of my clothing and shoes. I rarely do in-store shopping, uh, mainly because the area that I'm at, San Diego, as of right now, not really any cool retailers. There's only a handful that I go to every so often. Um, so I do spend most of my time shopping online. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped in any regard, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.